Happy Halloween! Welcome to the Butter and Big Dipples Horror Fest! <laughs> yes, welcome to our evil YouTube crossover! <laughs> of course, on with today's proceedings. What will feature in today's show, you may ask? Well, Badgeteers! Myself, I'll be doing a little chinwag chatterma bobs about the evil within. One of the most scariest survival horror games ever invented. And not for the weak of heart. And of course, Mr. Amazing, Big Deadpool, will be doing about Five Nights at Freddy's and his evil favourite villains from that. Yes, so... On with the show! Over to Big Dipple for today's evil, scary adventure. And I'll see you in a bit. Internet, so I'm Big Deadpool, and one of my favorite horror game characters is uh, actually a group of characters uh, who we all know and love. Uh, that would be the animatronics from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. Uh, I'm referring to Freddy. Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and uh, of course in the other installments there was Balloon Boy, uh, Springtrap, uh, Mangle, Toy Chica, they, they have like a whole menagerie of animatronics at this point, and with the fourth installment of the game coming out a couple months ago, and the, uh, I guess you could call it DLC update, I don't know. Uh, Scott is putting out, Scott Cawthorn, uh, I figured this would be a relevant topic for me to talk about. So, uh, I actually played a little bit of the Five Nights at Freddy's 1, uh, enough to get one terrible jump scare out of me. <coughs> Other than that one jump scare that I, I've gotten, I have not played any of the other games in the franchise. I do want to play the fourth one, though. The reason I like the animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's is the fact that they're almost, it's almost realistic how it can happen. Over here in America, I don't know if, you, if they have it in the UK or anywhere else, but there's a brand of uh, restaurants called Chuck E. Cheese, and pretty much it's an animatronic group of animatronics on the freaking stage and doing their little song and dance and thing and it almost makes me scared to go into those places nowadays because of those games just because of, of the implication of one of the animatro animatronics you know doing its little song and dance and kind of giving you this weird creepy stare the whole time it's doing its little song and dance waiting for the moment that you you're not paying attention you know, eating your pizza or something, and then it just comes up right behind you and jumps out and scares you or something. I don't know. <laughs> but the game itself, the Five Nights at Freddy's game, a, a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, I wouldn't say scary, but it's more of a dread-inducing game. Because your character literally sits in one place and is trying to keep these animatronics at bay through the entire course of all four games. Um, so props to him for using the same freaking mechanic in all four games and making it fresh every single time. Uh, again, I have not played them, but they do look like they're fun games. I have watched others play them, which is most of the, uh, enjoyment that I get out of the game, watching others freaking get the crap scared out of them, but that's just me. In relation to the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's, or uh, anything that, any theories that anyone's come up with, uh, I like how the, this franchise has built up this kind of lore behind these animatronics that has got everyone on the internet from you know vloggers and you know game conspiracy theorists 
uh, to like MatPat of the Game Theory uh, channel, and it's just amazing to hear all the different stories that people are thinking of, or the possibilities, all the theories that could be true. Maybe the bite of '87 was this, this, or you know, maybe the this piece of the lore. Maybe like these two characters are like an integral part of the entire series, you know, kind of thing. There's so many Easter eggs that I have not seen, but have heard about, that makes me wonder if Scott Cawthorn actually did intentionally plan on making uh, at least three games in the series, and just already had all the lore written out, you know, the man probably does know the entire lore of his, of his franchise from the, you know, from, like, chronological, uh, Fred Bear's pizza to the, the, the freaking Freddy Fazbear amusement horror show that's featured in the third one. Now, I'm probably just, like, been talking out of my ass for most of this, but this is one of the things that you can tell for me that when I get excited about something, because I'll just start rambling about it, and it's really fucking cool. <laughs> now, that's just, again, that's just my opinion. Badger actually has an, has his idea of who the best, you know, horror video game character is, so let's, uh, swing over to there and see what he's got to say. Perhaps he's right. Who knows? Fluffy little bunnies. Thank you, Pete, for talking about your favorite villains, the animatronics, from that horribly scary game, Five Nights at Freddy's. I will be talking about the evil within. This game is not for the work of heart. I tell you, this game is Pants There's nothing about this game that's redeeming at all. Once it gets you into its evil clutches, that's it. You can only hope that you'll survive class level one. And trust me, I'm not over exaggerating. This game is not for the casual gamer. As soon as you jump in, I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to give any spoilers. But as soon as you jump in, you're faced with your first serial killer, and you're faced with your first sort of boss. Actually, yeah. As soon as you enter the game, you're fighting a boss, pretty much. So this game holds no punches whatsoever. You need to be on your A game, even just to play the first level. It's horrible. Yeah. As even at the first boss. I mean, you probably know, the first boss is a chainsaw-wielding madman. That is not a game to be taken lightly. I will be talking about my favourite boss in this game, the Spider Lady. And trust me, she's not no Gwen Stacy. Yeah, the only way to kill her is in New Game Plus. Yes, that's right. New Game Plus! There's not much you can do. When you're playing the first playthrough, all you have to do is run like a madman away from her. Otherwise, she'll get your head and smash it into smash. Yeah, and you wouldn't want that with your sausages. It's not good, yeah? The only way to do it is to run really fast. So here's a gaming tip for you who haven't played the game yet. Make sure you invest in good points in the running skill. Because you'll be doing a lot of that in this game. Yeah, it's not really about shooting like a madman, like Resident Evil 5 and 6. This game is about old school survival horror. Hiding, sneaking, headshots, and running the hell away from the bad guys. Yeah? And she is no misconception, yeah? All you have to do is to try and run like a madman. She'll come right next to you, she'll spawn right next to you, right? So the only way to do it is to have lots of matches throw them on the floor, next to the oil puddles, and run. Because melee attacks don't work on her, so you can't punch her until she falls. No way, hell. No way. You have to hope and pray that you're next to an oil patch, throw it down on the floor, or an oil drum, throw it down on the floor, or blow it up next to her, and run like a madman away. Because this is tension, yeah? You've never played a game like it. 
it will hold you in your dreams. You will have nightmares about this game running away from this boss. The only way to do it is to hope and pray that you get her right next to her, throw a match down next to the oil and run like a madman. Yeah? Or the steam vents with heat coming off that uh, will blow up. But you have to undo them first, run past, set them off again, and then hope that you catch her under the stream. And really, she's what, two foot away from you? And she's the fastest boss in the game. What? Who thought of this? Who? Because I want to shake them by the hand for coming up with such a horrible, evil game. It's mad. It really is. Whoever thought of this game needs a handshake and a pat on the back for reinventing the horror survival genre, in my opinion. Of course, Bink has a different opinion of FNAB. So, who will you choose, Badgeteers and Badgerettes? Will it be Five Nights at Freddy's? Or will it be the Badger's Choice, The Evil Within, Spider Woman? Choose wisely in the comments below. Back to Bink to finish off the show. Bye! I'm watching you. Ah! Oh god. Whoa, what the fuck was that? No. No, no, no. Oh god, no. Well... It looks like I'm extracting past the challenge! I'm here.